In episode 9 of Substance TV, we're going to take a look at Project Justice for the Sega Dreamcast. Then it's on to R-Type Delta for the Sony PlayStation. And finally, it's E's Ark of Napishtim for the Sony PlayStation 2. This is Substance TV. Not more than two years after the release of the Sega Dreamcast here in the States, it was dead. But towards the end of the Sega Dreamcast life, Capcom released a boatload of titles for the system. Games like Gigaween 2, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Mars Matrix, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Power Stone 2, Spawn in the Demon's Hand, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter Third Strike, Cannon Spike, Tech Romancer, Heavy Metal, Geo Matrix, <sighs> and maybe the most oddball title out of the whole bunch, a little game known as Project Justice. Now, for those of you not in the know, Project Justice is a sequel to another little-known title known as Rival Schools on the Arcade and Sony PlayStation 1. And for those of you who have played the first Rival Schools, this game will be very familiar to you in many ways. The story revolves around a bunch of students and teachers from rivaling high schools that have a beef with one another, hence the whole term rival schools in the first game. The story of the game is, um, well, pretty much non-essential. Project Justice on the Dreamcast is a port of a game originally released in the arcades on Naomi Hardware. And thanks in a major part to the similarities between the Naomi and Sega Dreamcast hardware architecture, this is a very solid port. The game runs at a fast and zippy 60 frames per second throughout the entire game. Now these high schoolers aren't your typical array of Dawson's Creek or whiny little white kids with problems. They're an interesting bunch, I'd say. From a baseball player to a newspaper reporter to a, well, a, uh, a half-naked, grown man in a speedo wearing fins. Ugh. Needless to say, the characters are quite wacky and zany. It also has a very fun level design with a wide array of scenery. And look who's here, it's our friend Color! Ah, welcome Color, good to have you here. In terms of graphical fidelity and quality, the 3D and graphics of the game are pretty nice. It has a very competent soundtrack with a wide array of musical styles and tempos. Now, Capcom made a very smart move, in my opinion, by including the original Japanese voiceovers in the game. It just feels right. And as this is a fighting game, the soundtracks accent the on-screen action with cracks, slaps, booms, and a wide array of other sound effects. The fighting system is akin to its elder sibling rival schools. It is a team fighter, but the teams have been increased from two in rival schools to three in Project Justice. And since this is a Capcom fighting game, the engine within it should feel very familiar to fans of fighting games. On the surface, it's a simple fighting system that automatically combos your move with each successive button press. And just as in the game... Oh, he's so pringles. Where your curly mustache at? I mean, the game... Scoops! Scoops hack and die. The game... Oh, he got the mango set. Are you done? You done now? Okay, thank you. As I was saying, just as in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, you can do team-up moves with one or two of your other teammates. But unlike Marvel vs. Capcom 2, it's not just all three of you doing each of your individual super moves all at the same time. In Project Justice, your team supers are unique depending on the combination and order of characters. The supers range from cool to weird to support and healing, while others are a little, uh, huh. And depending on the combination of characters you choose, you can turn otherwise innocent moves into very naughty bad ones. Chris, Chris, no, no, we don't need you. Yes, go, go away. Yeah, bye bye. Okay, thank you. Now this game is a blast to play two player. They've even got some tournament options if you got a group of friends over. 
As is the case with most Capcom games released on the Dreamcast at this time, not many of them were released, so it's kind of hard to find them these days. Be prepared to shell out anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks for the game. Yeah, it's not cheap, but hey, I'd rather play this game than many of the other new $60 titles today. And more than likely, you're not going to find this game in town, so online's going to be your best bet. Sure, Project Justice is no Street Fighter Third Strike, but that's the beauty of it, you see? It's a fun fighting game that you can play with friends, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. Do you know the drill? Go check it out. No. In 1987, a little-known company named Irem created a shoot-em-up franchise known as R-Type, after which came R-Type 2, Super R-Type, R-Type Leo, and R-Type 3. While all of those games were great in their own respect, the basic formula never changed until 1999 with the release of R-Type Delta on the Sony PlayStation, and this was the series' first foray into 3D. Luckily for us, it retains its 2D side-scrolling nature. As is the continuing story in all R-Type games, the evil Bido are up to no good once again. Huh, <laughs> motivation enough for me to kill things. Graphically, this game was very impressive for the time. And for the most part, the game runs at 60 frames per second, with a few drops when the on-screen action gets a little bit hectic. The designers at Irem did a really nice job converting what was once a 2D sprite into a 3D model. The R-Type ship itself is instantly recognizable for longtime fans of the series. I really like the color contrast present within the game. Uh, what I mean by that is, the backgrounds themselves are these dilapidated, post-apocalyptic cities and barren landscapes, but then in the foreground are these bright red flaming jets coming out of your ship, and these colorful power-ups and high-contrast bosses, and so they play off each other very well. If you look at this game from a purely polygon standpoint, you may find some faults in it. But I think for a game that's over a decade old, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't have all the graphical bells and whistles games today have, but it still looks really good. And complementing the aforementioned graphics is a killer soundtrack. It's got this deep and gritty techno feel with hints of some of the original game soundtracks brought in as well. And the sound effects laid over this soundtrack are no pushovers either. Needless to say, things blow up really good. The basic gameplay is classic R-Type. Shoot enemies, get power-ups, you can also speed up and speed down at will. And some of these fallen enemies will release something called laser crystals. Each come in one of three tasty varieties. And what would an R-Type game be without the Force? No, 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 not that kind. No, 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 this kind, yeah. See, the Force module not only acts as your power-up, it also allows you to change the direction in which you're firing, either forwards or backwards. It also has the added benefit of blocking some of the incoming enemy bullets. Whenever your Force module absorbs a bullet or hits another enemy, it fills this little tiny gauge at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Once this little gauge reaches 100%, you press a button and release a mega screen clearing attack. Another first in this game is the inclusion of new ships, different from your standard one you've played through in all the other R-Types. And all of these ships are not just cosmetically different, they each have their own Force module and weapon power-ups. I will have to warn you, this game can get a little difficult at times. It's one hit and you're dead. It'll require a little bit of uh, patience and practice to properly get through the game, but the payoff is worth it. If you're interested in picking up an original copy of this game on the PlayStation, get ready to drop a little bit of cash. Copies online have been going for around 30 bucks and higher, but if you're a PS3 owner, you can waltz right on over to the PSN store and download this game for a paltry $5.99. The R-Type series has recently seen a resurgence of the classics with the release of R-Type Dimensions on the Xbox 360. So what better time to check out a game like R-Type Delta?
If you don't know too much about the E series, well, don't worry, not too many folks do. Even after playing E's 3 when I was a kid on the Super Nintendo, I wasn't even sure what to make of it. 3 was a decent game, but I never remember falling in love with the series. And I never had a chance to play the first one or the second one because, well, I never owned a Master System or a TurboGrafx-16. Little did I know that it would be nearly 15 years before we got another game here in the States, with the release of E's Ark of Napishtim. And technically this is the sixth game in the E series. And for this review, I'm going to be particularly talking about the PS2 version as, in my opinion, it's the superior one over the PSP and the PC. You take on the role of a young red-headed boy named Adol. The story starts out in a very similar way to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. You see, you're on this ship, it crashes at sea, you somehow survive, and you're washed up on the beaches of some mysterious land. After which you're nursed back to health and you continue on to a journey in which you're trying to find out about some mysterious power. If I had one real complaint about the game, it would be with the lack of originality present in the story. It's not a bad story by any means, but when compared to other great RPG stories, it's a little stale and redundant. There are a few twists and surprises later on, but nothing that really pulls it from the pit of mediocrity. Graphically, I'd say it's a bit of a mixed bag. While the characters have a nice style and flair, the low polygon models could have been a little bit better. Though seeing as this is a port of a PC game in which all of the characters were originally pre-rendered, I'd say this is the better option. I did like some of the graphical details present in the game. For instance, when you change a shield or armor or a sword, you can actually see the difference on screen every time you do it. It may not be Metal Gear Solid 2 from a graphical standpoint, but the game has an older feel and style, so I found it acceptable. One of the finest elements of this game is the soundtrack. The entire musical landscape of this game is not only varied in tempo, chord structure, and mood, they are all wonderfully composed and feel right at home in their respective levels. And the sound effects add a nice little touch. All of the on-screen dialogue is voiced out, but I recommend you change the voice settings to Japanese as the English voice acting is nothing short of laughable. What drew me to this game was the gameplay, very similar to that of the Legend of Zelda series. The best and easiest way I can describe the gameplay is like Zelda on speed. Your attacks come off almost as fast as you can hit the button. Adol himself controls great, and the platforming sections work well. There are a few puzzles here and there, but uh, nothing mind-boggling by any means. As you progress through the game, you're able to obtain more swords and upgrade them. Long story short, if you like the original Legend of Zelda or Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, you'll like this game. The game seems just right in the difficulty department. Yeah, you may be killed by a boss here or there, but that's just a sign you're not ready to be in that area. Most used game stores have a bevy of PS2 games available. Now, this doesn't mean the game is going to be instantly findable, but it's not going to be impossible by any means. And if you're lucky enough to stumble upon a copy, most of them start at just 15 bucks. Sure, I know you're shy, you don't know too much about the E-Series, but take the time to introduce yourself to this lovely little game. I think you'll be glad you did. And it looks like another episode of Substance TV is on the books and finished. Well, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's watched. Whether you're a new fan or an old fan, we really appreciate you guys checking us out every month and coming back to see what we have to offer. Now, there is one little announcement I'd like to talk about. While we've been working on Episode 9, we've also been working tirelessly on Episode 10 and beyond. Now, why is that, you ask? Well, it's a very simple answer. I don't want to reveal all the juicy details because, well, I like to be secretive like that. But I will say that Substance TV will be undergoing a reboot of sorts. If you want to know particulars and specifics about what's going on with Substance TV, then you can always check www.substance-tv.com for all the latest news and updates here in the next days, weeks, and months to come. Thanks again for watching, and as always, game on.